What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech, and today we're going to be talking about setting up a remote access to your home lab or your inside network, and we're going to be, in a sense, proxying it through Cloudflare tunnels. So we're going to be using Cloudflare tunnels to expose our internal network to be able to access it from the outside. We're also going to be adding on additional security through Cloudflare to authenticate users before they're able to hit any internal resources inside your home lab or your local network. Today we're going to be using Cloudflare tunnels and we're going to be using Apache Guacamole. I've made videos on both of these topics in the past and we're going to be building off of those. So if you aren't familiar with either of those, I'm going to have some links down below and I would suggest checking out those videos first and maybe getting that project set up first and then you can come back and set up this video or if you want to watch through this one and have an idea of what we're trying to do and then you work around to set up how you want but we are going to be using Apache Guacamole to be able to access all of our internal resources or a jump box of sense to be able to access everything and then we're going to be using Cloudflare tunnels to safely expose it to the internet. Before we do any of this make sure to harden your security as best as possible there is still a chance that something might slip through being that we are exposing it to the public internet so make sure that you have everything set up to be as secure as possible for your systems the idea here is that we are going to be using a cloudflare tunnel to be able to access our network remotely without using a vpn we are putting some sort of authentication on it but you never know what might happen so i would definitely make sure that you have some sort of security in place the only other thing you're going to need for this video is a domain name and now we can get right into it so now we're going to start talking about what we're going to be doing today so the idea of today's video is going to be that when I go over here to this domain, you can see I have apache.barmindtest.net slash guacamole. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to first be able to see the sign in page and it's going to have me authenticate with a one time pin or my Google account from Cloudflare. This is really what we're going to be focusing on setting up today in addition with Apache guacamole and the Cloudflare tunnels. I'm not going to be covering the setup of Apache Guacamole or Cloudflare Tunnels. Like I said, I'll have a video down below that you can check out for that. Quick overview though, for if you're not familiar, Cloudflare or Cloudflare Tunnels is a Proxmox helper script. It's available on the site. It's a very simple setup. I, like I said, I have a video that goes along the setup for this, and it's a super easy way to just be able to expose some of your internal services. Apache Guacamole is a similar one. It has a helper script. I have a video if you want to check it out. It works really well. You can see if I just come over to it, it just pretty much gives me console access to a machine and I can come over here and I can add as many machines as I want. I can have access to a Windows machine. It just takes a second to load. You can see it's signing me in. I have access to a Windows machine and I can do whatever I might need. And this is the idea of today's video so I can have remote access to my network. Now that we kind of have the idea of the Cloudflare tunnel and Apache guacamole out of the way, I'm going to more focus on the Cloudflare side, up, side of things for the tunnel and sharing stuff out. So we're gonna skip over to Cloudflare right now. Like I said, one of the requirements you're going to need for this is a domain, whether you get a free one somewhere on one of the websites or a cheap one, or if you want to just go through Cloudflare completely, you could do it that way. I know you can get some domains other places and transfer them to Cloudflare. I always find it's just easier to buy my domain with Cloudflare and do everything with them. So like I said, this is going to be the first start. We're going to need a domain name in Cloudflare. You can see if, if I come over to DNS, it already has a DNS entry. We don't need to worry about this because the tunnel is going to set this up for us automatically. So on Cloudflare's homepage, you're gonna to wanna to open up Zero Trust. Now, I find the easiest way is to open this in a new tab. So you can just right click and open a new tab. And if we come over to the Zero Trust dashboard, if you don't have it already set up, you should if you already have Cloudflare Tunnels. It's a super simple process. And like I said, my other video for Cloudflare Tunnels goes over in more detail. The idea of what we're gonna be doing today is working with tunnels. So we're gonna come over to Network. Now, I already have a tunnel set up, so I'm just going to kind of build off of it. But for a new one, you would go through that initial process, and now we can set it up. So I'm just going to come over to my current one. I'm going to configure, and in public host names is where we can add in what we're trying to work with. So you can see I want to work with Apache.BarMindTest. This is the one that I set up. So you would click Add Public Host Name, and you can put in whatever you might want it to be. So for me, I'm going to do Apache. 
and then I would select one of my domain names. So I'm just gonna put in the domain I wanna work with. And you can see over here, it's gonna be apache.barmindtest.net. Now, this was an issue I had on the last Cloudflare Tunnels video I wanted to do, because Apache Guacamole uses this slash guacamole at the end of its URL. This was an issue I had because Cloudflare wasn't doing the redirect, and I actually saw a comment when I was looking back at it not too long ago of a viewer who actually told me how to get around this. So you see how it has this optional path over here. If you put guacamole in there, it's going to know to do the redirect, and it's going to set it up properly. And now over here, we would just put in our service, and it's just going to be whatever the internal IP is going to be. So for me, it's going to be 192.168.50.86.88. I'm just kind of doing this as a quick overview, but this would be how you already have your tunnel set up. Now you would click save and it's going to build out your tunnel as well as make the DNS record for it. And now you should be able to access your internal resource publicly from this domain. So you should have something similar to however you might have wrote it. So it should be if you if you're doing Apache, it could be Apache dot whatever you're doing your domain name is. And then over here, it should have some information. If you click on it, it should actually have the public host name and it probably won't work because it's not going to automatically put the guacamole at the end. But if you do, it's gonna redirect you and now you can see that we're accessing the internal resource over the domain publicly. If we click on the lock, we can see we, there is a secure connection. It has an SSL cert. And we can close this out for now. So now that we actually have the tunnel up and working, we need to get into the process of securing the tunnel. So this is gonna be done in another tab over here in Zero Trust, and it's gonna be under access. There's a few ways to do this, but the idea of this tab is gonna be that we're making access rules for accessing our tunnels or our public domains or the services that we're running. There's gonna be a lot of different ways we could chop this up. One way we could do it is come over to rule groups and we can create groups that we can use globally in our rules, or we can make rules as we go. So if you are interested, you plan to have multiple tunnels, maybe you wanna have additional groups, you could do that easily through here. So you're gonna to come to rule groups. Now, if you used Cloudflare in the past like this, you might have remembered it as access groups. It seems that in a update, they changed it. So when I was doing some research into all this, I was very confused because nothing matched up. But if we come over to add a group, we can make a group name. And pretty much what we could do is we can do stuff like predefine users from their email to allow them access in, or we can set up geo block in a sense. So we can allow it so only the United States can get in. We could block all other countries. Or if there's specific countries that you want to block, you could do so. So we could do something like a country block. And then we can come over here to include. And we can say we want to include the United States. And we can exclude all these other countries. So we can come over here to countries. And let's say we want to block the big ones. We could block Russia, China, Ukraine. And we could do this. These are just some of the big countries that I actually deal with at work. This is when we typically do a, do a geo block. These are some of the first ones that we always pick out. So this is just why I pick these countries, just because they typically lead the cyber attacks going on currently. But we could do something like this. I'm gonna just click cancel to close this out. We're gonna leave. Another way we could do it is we can do allowed users, and now we can do email. So you can see over here we have emails. Now I can do barmindtech at gmail.com and whatever other emails that I might want to use. Now let's say you're somebody who has your own email domain. You can come over here to emails end and in and in here we can do at barmindtech.com. So now everybody with an at barmindtech.com email when they try to sign in will be allowed in. The other options are very wide. There's a lot of different ones. We could do IP ranges. We could do certain login methods. We can do countries, common names. There's a lot of them, but this is how we can make a rule group to predefine certain rules to be used globally. The next thing we're going to have to do after we get some rules set up is come over to settings and I'm going to be jumping around a little bit, but it's just how we need to go to set all this up. We're going to come over to authentication. And over here, you can see I have login methods, which are Google and one time pin. Cloudflare has a bunch of different authentication methods that you can add in. The majority of them are focused on enterprise, but there are certain ones such as Facebook, LinkedIn. There was a GitHub one. We have Google. They have their one time pin, which is a default one that gets added. 
it pretty much just makes it that when somebody who is allowed to enter the site similarly to what i was just showing is they'll receive a one-time pin in their email this one works pretty well i did find some issues that it's intermittent for something like a gmail account so as a backup i added google now they give you all the instructions how to set it up and they do that for all the other ones so you could do google or you could do a google workspace of course you could use any one that you might like but you're going to need some sort of authentication method and this is how we're going to verify who's logging in so after you get one of these set up you can come back and then we'll continue on with the next steps so after you have your login method set up now we can actually start setting up the security to our new tunnel that we set up to do this we're going to come over to access now again access is going to differ from network this is going to differ from that we already have the tunnel set up over here you know this is going to differ from having this tunnel already set up now what we're actually going to be doing is adding the security for this tunnel so if i come over to access again if we have policies we can predefine some policies in here so we can set up some certain things we don't have to go too crazy what we're going to do is come over to applications and now we would click add an application you're going to select self-hosted unless you have something else that you want to use and now we can start setting up our application so if i want to call it guac we can name our application guac and then we could do our session duration this is going to really be up to what you want to do i might do something short like 30 minutes just so it times out quicker we're going to add a public host name so now this is how it's going to tie back to our tunnel that we're using so now if i want to do something like apache i can put my domain in that we're going to use and then I'm going to put in guacamole. Now this will tie back to that domain that we were using to access Apache guacamole. If you really want to lock down the access, let's say you want to put in geoblock in or something similar, you can do that in here. You can see I have a couple of rules in here for allow in. This goes with my rule groups that I made for allowing the US and certain users. So I'm going to check that off or maybe you want to put a geoblock or something similar. You could do it here. If you don't, it's no big deal, but I would recommend putting something in here just to limit access at some point. The next step over here is going to be login methods. Now by default, accept all is going to be checked off. I want to uncheck it and I do want to check off one time pin and Google. Now I like to do this just so I have something in case one fails. We don't need to worry about warp, so we're just going to click next. Now this is going to be for the actual access of the site, like view wise. So if you want to change anything, let's say use a custom logo, you can, you could put all that in here. We can click next again, and then this would just be the advanced settings. At this point, you should be all good to just save, and then you should be able to access your site. And as long as everything worked, you should go be able to visit your site and be able to hit something similar like this. It's going to, when I go to that site, it's automatically gonna redirect me to this one for me to authenticate. And then after I authenticate, it's going to allow me access in to reach to Apache Guacamole. So you would just authenticate and then you're all set. So this is actually how we would secure our tunnels to be able to authenticate users before they're able to reach into our internal network or whatever we're sharing out. This is really important for this this project because we are sharing out Apache Guacamole, which is gonna have direct access to a machine and be able to log into it on our network. So securing it is super important. And that's why all this is really important to have set up properly. So that is how we set up Cloudflare tunnels with a authentication login method for Apache Guacamole. So the idea of this was, you know, maybe you're away from your house. You don't have a computer with you. You don't have a VPN that's working. You know, maybe you're traveling, you're at a hotel and they just have the computers to use in the computer room. You can't install anything. You can't get any access in. This would be a really good backup to your backup connection if you can't get a VPN back in. At least you have a secure way to connect back and be able to get some work done on your machine if you need so. This was actually an idea I had a while back. I tried doing this the last time we did the Cloudflare tunnels like I was mentioning, but I ran into some issues. And I want to thank the viewer who commented about putting the slash guacamole in the optional file path if they are still watching. I hope you are. But thank you for that because that really helped get this all sorted out. Like I said earlier, it is really important to ensure security is all set up properly on all the machines. Or whether it's being set up for Apache Guacamole, to log into Apache Guacamole, and on your Cloudflare tunnel side. 
This is going to be able to get direct access to all the machines in your internal network, depending on how you have it set up. So security is very important on this project. And I want to just stress that so you have it all set up properly on your side. But this is how we can set up Cloudflare tunnels to be able to access Apache Guacamole, to be able to access our internal network when we don't have a VPN or something similar. I want to thank you all for watching. As always, I have links to all the gear in my home lab down below if you want to check any of it out. I'll have a link to the Discord server if you want to join. Again, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.